Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to configure the Packet Tracer 4.5.1 Packet Tracer Interval and Routing Challenge. Okay, so here we have our scenario. So this is our addressing table, our VLAN and port assignments table. So let's see our scenario. In this activity, you will demonstrate and reinforce your ability to implement interval on routing, including configuring IP addresses, VLAN tracking, and subinterfaces. So our instructions is configure the devices to meet the requirement, the following requirements. Okay, so the first requirement is assign IP addressing to R1 and S1 based on the addressing table. So we are here our, our addressing table. So let's start configuring the router R1. Okay, we can access it directly. Enable, configure terminal. Okay, so what we have here. As you can see, we have gigabit zero slash zero, and then we have some sub interfaces in the gigabit zero slash one. Okay, so I can think that, okay, so our gigabit zero slash zero will be the connection from router R1 and HQ, and the sub interfaces will be the configuration between router R1 and switch S1, because this is the configuration for router on the stick. Okay, so let's check our interfaces. Okay, as you can see, we have already configured the interface gigabit zero slash zero with the IP address and this interface it's up and up. So basically we just need to configure the gigabit ethernet zero slash one. So let's start configuring the sub interface. So interface gigabit zero slash one dot then encapsulation dot on queue 10 and now our IP address 172.17.10.1255255255.0. So this is our first first sub interface. Now let's configure the other sub interfaces a dot 20 encapsulation dot on one q 20 and now our IP address just change here from 10 to 20. Okay, now the next sub interface dot 30 encapsulation 30 and now our IP address 30. Okay, so the first three sub interfaces are configured. Now let's configure the other sub interfaces. Now you have to pay attention. This is sub interface dot 88. Now the encapsulation, because if you see here in the table and the VLAN table, you can see that the VLAN 88 is the native VLAN. So we need to specify that here. It's our native VLAN. And now configure the IP address 88. Now the last sub interface, which is the management, configured encapsulation, and finally the IP address. Now we have configured all the sub interfaces, but as you can see, the colors are red. Why? Because the interface is not active. So we go to the interface gigabit zero slash one. Okay, the main interface, and we'll do the no shutdown command. As you can see, all the interfaces are now up. If you do the to show IP interface brief, you can see that all interfaces are configured and that they are up. Okay, so everything is done for the router. Now let's configure the switch. Okay, the switch here, we have the, our the configuration for the the switch virtual interface. So let's do interface VLAN 99, IP address 72.17.9.10. Okay. 552.5.0 subnet mask. Okay. We have configured our uh, sub our switch virtual interface. 
Okay, so assign IP addressing to R1 and S1 based on the addressing table. Okay, what we have here, the default gateway, which is the next instruction, configure the default gateway on S1. So, okay, let's configure it. IP default gateway, which is 172.7.9.1. Okay, default gateway. So we can access the switch to do the management. Next instruction, create name and assign VLANs on S1 based on the VLAN and port assignments table. Ports should be in access mode. Your VLAN names should match the names in the table exactly. Okay, so let's configure the VLANs, create the VLANs and configure it and associate the interfaces to the VLANs. And they refer here, ports should be in access mode. So, okay, let's start configuring the VLANs. So first VLAN is VLAN 10, name is faculty slash staff. Please pay attention that the name must match exactly as the instruction. VLAN 20 with the name students. VLAN 30. VLAN 30 with the name guest default. Okay. The VLAN. 88 with the name native and last 99. Okay. Interface VLAN 99 change state to a, because we have already created a switch virtual interface with the name management. Okay, we do, do, do show IP. Do show, sorry. VLAN brief, you can see here all inter all VLANs that we have created, the names, and if you have uh, any sub-interface, any interface that is associated with the VLAN. Okay, now let's associate the interfaces to the VLANs. So it will be interface range, pass Ethernet 0 slash 11, 17. Switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 10. Okay. Now, from 18, 24, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 20. Okay. Now, the range, pass Ethernet 0 slash 6 to 10, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN 30. And now we have the VLAN 88, which is native and is associated to the gigabit 0 slash 1, but this interface of the switch is the trunk one, okay? So this this was going to be the next instruction, configure gigabit zero slash one of switch S1 as a static trunk and assign to native VLAN. Okay, so interface gigabit zero slash one, switch port mode, trunk, okay? Switch port trunk native VLAN 88. or configuration of the trunk. It's done. Now, all ports that are not assigned to a VLAN should be disabled. Okay. So do the interface range, fast Ethernet zero slash. Okay, so it's going to be from the fast Ethernet zero slash one to five. Okay, that's the shutdown. Okay. And now it's missing one interface. It what what which is the interface if you do the, the usual IP interface brief this is going to be okay so the first five is shut down the others 
from the 6th to 24 is configured. Gigabit 0 slash 1 is trunk. So the last one is gigabit 0 slash 2. So interface gigabit 0 slash 2, we do the shutdown. And we have configured all the packet tracer as instructed. Okay, so last configure intervlan routing on R1 based on the addressing table. Okay, we have done this, this step in the beginning because I think it's easier when we are configured in addressing to the, the configuration of the interval and routing. And last, verify connectivity, R1, S1, and all PCs should be able to ping each other and the server. So I'll just ping from PC1. Server. Sorry. It will take some time, okay, because it's the the process of the ping because of the resolution of the ARP. Okay, and as you can see, the ping is successful. So I thank you. I hope you like the video. See you.